Well, everyone, I got some, I got some bad news <laughs> and some good news because you got to keep things positive. Oh my gosh. I had a really rough day the other day. Well, I'm having a rough day today, actually. Ugh. A wet wipe shower. <laughs> it's the van life way. Look at the size of that thing. Right down to my sausage little toes. I rolled my ankle the other day and my entire thing went boof on the other side and then the whole foot started to swell. And I spent the whole night the other night in the hospital getting x-rays and stuff and I got a thick ankle, my friends. Oh, come on. Come on, footsies, get in there. That's a weird camera angle. <laughs> Look how dirty they are, too, these, these pants. I've been wearing the same pants for, like, days. This is going to be a little bit of a story time video. So three days ago, I was standing on the ladder on the side of my van, and I got down to the bottom step, and I normally just jump off of it. It's something that I've always done. Sometimes I step down, but because my van's super high, it's always a really weird, long, stretch down step. So sometimes I just jump. I'll never do that again, <laughs> let me tell you that. So what happened was I was at the shop here with the local mechanic guy that was thinking about taking on my ambulance project, but wanted to come down and assess the situation came down we had a look he decided to say no to me uh, for timeline reasons but that's okay because we have a whole awesome flip side to this story on a mechanic front we'll stick around later in the video i'll get to that one so what happened with me was me and him started talking about some of the creaks and some of the weird noises my van had he goes well let's take a look at that so he crawls underneath my vehicle. I go up my ladder. I'm rocking the van back and forth and trying to bounce it up and down to create that creaking noise. So it's not the squeak that my leaf spring had. It's more like a, <laughs> it's a weird sound. So um, he was down there trying to take a look at it. And I thought he had moved to the other side of the vehicle to listen over there. And I jumped down off the ladder and his little legs were still dangling out from underneath the ladder and one of my feet hit his leg and I rolled it to the outside and boom, the whole thing swelled up, got super hot. All of a sudden my sock got really tight. I looked down, pulled it up. I'm like, oh <laughs> no, that, that's not good. And he felt really bad. It wasn't his fault whatsoever. My own fault for not looking down and my own fault for not stepping down. I will never do that again. Imagine that being out there in the back country I jumped down off my side ladder. There's a little rock down there that twisted a little bit. Boom. Now I'm in this scenario down there and I can't put pressure on it whatsoever. Like I couldn't. Like putting any pressure on it, it was not an option. I felt like I kind of broke it. I called Emmy because Emmy's back on Vancouver Island. I'm like, Emmy, can you do me a favor? She's like, well, anything. I'm like, I need a ride to the emergency room. She's like, oh no, boyfriend, what did you do? <laughs> So she came by, picked me up, took me to the emergency. She took her cruisy and stuff like that while I was in the emergency room all night long. And the doctor was poking around at my foot and uh, I jumped, was like, whoa, I felt that one. He's like, you shouldn't feel pain there. I think you might have broken your ankle. So he sent me in for x-rays. Thankfully, it wasn't broken. All he said to me was obviously ice it, get some rest over the next little bit and buy one of those little air boots. They're like a boot, straps to your foot, kind of like all little things, little straps on the front of it, and it allows me to be able to put pressure on it when I feel like that I'm ready. So Emmy did some running around for me, and she went into town, found me a set of crutches, but she couldn't find crutches in my height for some reason, maybe they're sold out everywhere. So she couldn't find crutches in my height, so she bought crutches for someone who's 5'10", and I'm 5'11", and when she I'll show you these later. When she brought them to me, I had to I had to take a broomstick and extend them. Okay, we'll show you that. I got crafty in the shop the other day. <laughs> uh, and uh, we couldn't find any of those air boots at any of the pharmacies in my size. They were like, oh, smalls and mediums, maybe a large. I'd be an extra large in that boot. 
So I took to the internet and I found myself a set of boots from a company in Ontario and they should be here today, meaning that we can now support this. But uh, yeah, enough story time. I got to make some coffee and then I'll show you guys how I've been getting around the shop and tell you a really awesome story about the engine work on the ambulance and who's going to do it, how I met the person that's doing it and where we're doing it. On the plus side, about, well, on the knee, there we go, about being in the van is that I can move around on my knees just fine. So keeping my back foot up off the floor, moving around here is an absolute breeze. I'll put that up there. So getting around my house is no problem at all. If I had a traditional sticks and bricks home, I would have to be standing around my crutches or finding ways to get around my house. Where here, I can get around my home just fine because everything I need is within reach. Like my kitchen's here, my cupboards are there, my desk is there. Anything I need, power switches, it's all within like arm's reach. So when you have an injury in something like this, being in a van is just downright epic. I've been injured in the van before, so I hurt my back couple of times living in my van over the last five years where it's left me like out of commission and there's no other place I would have rather have been than in my van because if I had my apartment I would have had to have gone from like the front room all the way down the hallway to the bathroom to use the washroom we're in the van you just got to go from the bed to the floor to reach your pee bottle like within a couple of feet to get everything necessary you need done and in an emergency, you need to go from the bed to the driver's seat, which is not that far. You know, that's a short little, short little, little, I was going to say jaunt, but I think a jaunt would be more like a run. <laughs> a short little crawl to the front seat to get somewhere. So if you need to go to the drive through pharmacy or pull to the front door of the emergency clinic, you can. And that's, I think, is a really epic part about van life. A lot of people always go like, what's going to happen if you get injured in a van? I, I would rather be injured in this small, tiny little space of mine where I don't have to move around very much than to live in a larger home. Like I've had some apartments that have had some really weird layouts before. <laughs> Getting around in that right now would suck. Hardest part is getting getting in and out of bed. Otherwise, things have been pretty good. Oh, I still can't put any pressure at all on my foot. Oh come on! <laughs> it's like a giant sausage. That's insane. Like that's not even funny. <laughs> Sorry for the gross feet shot, you guys. But that's that's not even. That's brutal. I can barely move my toes. Like, barely. <laughs> Whoa, coffee. See, like, I can sit in bed and shut my burner off. <laughs> Couldn't do that in any other, in, in any of my other apartments. So when you're injured and things are over boiling, you don't gotta, like, find a way to hobble to the kitchen. Well, I guess at that point, don't leave the kitchen. Whoa. It's been a while since I've made a pour over coffee. I think I ground too many coffee grinds. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this. I've been using that French press like every time I make coffee in the van, it's been French press since I bought it. I miss this style. Good morning, everybody. Boy, do I have a really good story to tell you about the ambulance. So if you missed the end of yesterday's video, go and watch it. I gave you a ton of history that I recently found out about that ambo. I found out how many kilometers are on that engine, when that 4x4 kit was done, and the backstory on everything, the backstory on the plan, the girl had that originally owned it, and then a bit of the story about the hands that it went through before it got 
to me. But a part of that that has unfolded since the island mechanic said no is I messaged Lauren and I'm like, so, okay, let me back this up. So if you missed the end of yesterday's video, Lauren is the gentleman that installed the 4x4 kit in my ambulance four years ago with one of the previous owners when she had the big dream to turn that thing into one crazy off-road camper van and Lauren was a part of her dream. He, he got a transmission rebuilt for her and installed the 4x4 conversion in it and then she took off, got overwhelmed with it and tapped out. So sold it, bought Lauren's 4x4 bus, and now she's off in the big 4x4 bus. So anyway, I called Lauren. I'm like, Lauren, do you want to do it? Lauren's like, I would be honored to do it, bro. And then I got super pumped up. So me and Lauren talked about the plan, talked about some of the stuff that that he thinks I should do while it's out and maybe some little upgrades to the engine and exhaust system that might be a good idea. And I just got super, super pumped on it because this is Lauren's area of expertise. He is all about those Ford Econolines. He knows a pile about the diesels. That's what he does. So it feels like my van is going back home to where it started with someone who specializes in Ford Econoline 7.3 liter diesels. And I'm pumped about that because he knows that engine like the palm of his hand. And uh, guys, I'm just really pumped about this whole experience, but this is where it gets cool. I thought I would have to take it to the mainland to Lauren's shop. And when we were talking, Lauren's like, hey man, we're gonna do it at your shop. <laughs> what? At my shop? He's like, yeah, I'll bring my hoist over and we'll just do it there. You have a great shop, Chrome. It'll be good for content for you to keep it there. I'm like, ooh now you're talking buddy so i got super super pumped on it so once that engine comes out it will allow it'll allow me to degrease the whole engine bay the frame and clean everything right up because that thing's probably been leaking in there for a long time it's probably oil all over the bottom so i want to clean up that bay um maybe do some painting and stuff in the engine bay do some soundproofing for sure like debt in the sound so the engine you know, doesn't radiate through the floor. Maybe we can deaden that sound a bit so it's a bit of a quieter drive and an easier conversation between the driver and the passenger because that thing's super loud inside right now and having a conversation. Well, you'd have to talk with walkie-talkies to each other. That's how big and rumbly that 7.3 liter diesel is. So uh, I'm really excited about all of this and to have Lauren come here to my shop and finish off what he started on that ambulance means the world to me. This is where this project starts to get very personal and I start to fall in love with that ambulance. All year last year, I kept telling you guys, yeah, I don't know, I'll probably sell it. I don't think I'm selling it anymore. You know, I think last year was just a really cool rig. And now that I'm starting to get a history on it, you start to feel things for it, you know what I mean? And I'm really excited to see this project right through to the end, build it out to be the most biggest, beefiest, and aggressive looking 4x4 ambulance on the streets. Something unique, a cool body shape, and a really cool design. Anyway guys, just wanted to share that story with you. And um, a bit of a change in content over the next couple of weeks or so until I can get a bit more mobile. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a lot of projects that I can do around my shop. And um, I've been getting around here quite, quite good. I have a stool with wheels on it that has been an absolute lifesaver around here. Let me show you. So when Emmy bought these, they were for someone shorter than me. So the top, the top one there is five foot ten, and it didn't quite reach my armpit. <laughs> so I took one of the brooms at the shop, this Violet Violeta, <laughs> and I turned my turned my cast into a, uh, a it's the broomstick. It worked out really well. So this thing here had a stem on it about that long. I just put the broomstick over there. I drilled it on either side. Now my crutches, well, two things. They match the red in my shop and they're, whoops, they're actually an appropriate size, which, which is great. It's awesome. But how I've been mainly getting around in the shop is my stool, my little, my little tool stool. This thing is great. So I've been just running around on my knee 
just kind of pushing around like that, like one of those little ones. Or, hold on, or I sit on it and I just kind of push myself around. <laughs> like, this is mainly how I get around most of all. It's just easier this way. Kind of use everything to push me around. <laughs> so, since I hurt my foot, I haven't felt any pain in there whatsoever. And even when I sit it on the bottom of my stool here, there's no pain at all as long as I keep it super, super light. But that protective boot should be in today, which means I'll be able to strap this in super tight. That way my ankle can't move whatsoever. But yeah, this is how I get around. Okay, not bad. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That's all I wanted. I don't know what we're gonna do for content around here. Oh, let me show you something before we go too. The, uh, it was Halloween the other day and Emmy came by, brought me snacks and made me some pierogies and stuff for dinner and she's been super great. And brought a pumpkin. So we carved a pumpkin for Halloween. There's our pumpkin. But because I'm a DJ, I put it on top of one of my LED lights. So uh, check that out. Hey, oh. <laughs> Nighty night, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, wish me luck. And uh, I don't know what kind of fun we're going to get up to over the next little while while I can't do much. Maybe we'll do a, uh, a shop tour. Maybe. Maybe let me know what you guys need from me now that I can't run around and do things. Any videos you want me to make that we can just sit down and just talk about? Huh, there'll be some live streams, I don't know. I can't believe, I can't believe that happened on that ladder right there. Anyway guys, Yeehaw! thanks for hanging out. <laughs> See you on the next one.